Hey, hey, you wonderful people. Marcus House with you here. Welcome to this episode. Today we are doing something very exciting. We've managed to pick up these awesome two missions uh, off here to lathe. In this mission, we need to dock two vessels together around Lathe. That includes the one we are about to launch and another vessel I already have out at Lathe. We also need to return to Kerbin from Lathe uh, from doing an orbit and a flyby. The second one here, though, we need to do is the bigger mission. We need to test the J2 Juno engine, and we need to do this while it's splashed down in the ocean. Now, this mission is worth over a million in fun, so that's awesome. Let's get this thing started. In the vehicle assembly building, we have a very large reusable booster here. Well, hopefully reusable. Uh, we'll just delete the uh, fairing off this so we can see it a little more clearly. Now, in the top of this thing, we have a very tiny SSTO that's capable of getting to lathe and back after deorbiting. We also have a very large transfer stage here full of liquid fuel. And this thing is powered by six Nerve Rocket motors, which are, of course, the most efficient engine in the stock game, with the exception of the ion engines, which are too painful to use, in my opinion, for something like this. We have room for four passengers in the Mark I crew cabins here, one of which will be for Burberry Kerman, taking, of course, the most risky seat there in the SSTO. And we're going to take Jeb, of course, with a scientist and an engineer here, Lanina and Astris. Heading to the launch pad here now, launching, and we can actually see here the thrust to weight on this thing is quite high. It is around 1.5. Now, we won't be ditching any of this booster stage. We are going to send this entire thing up in one stage, and we're going to try to return this. The higher the thrust to weight ratio, of course, the faster you can achieve orbit, and the more chance you have of actually bringing some of your stages back. So just keep that in mind if you do want to do something like this. Now, obviously, the craft file will be in the description with all my other craft files. Obviously, you'll notice here that I am very heavily speeding up this launch process in editing. I say this, of course, because I quite frequently get questions asking me if I'm running some kind of supercomputer to get the frame rates that I'm getting here. No, I am not. I am just quite heavily editing and speeding up the footage, so you guys don't need to sit through things in real time. Ditching those fairings as we exit the atmosphere, and we're coming up here to do our circularization burn as we approach the apoapsis marker there. The circularization burn's going to take us around 30 seconds, so uh, we don't need to burn quite yet. What we can do, though, is deploy our solar arrays. Now we've passed that 70 kilometer altitude. So there we go there, starting our burn as our time to apoapsis approaches zero. And what we're doing here, of course, is just slightly adjusting our thrust direction just to keep that time to apoapsis as close to zero as we can. That gives us a good circularization. And there we go, burn complete there. So we can now undock this thing. We have some fuel left to return this booster here, hopefully. We'll, uh, we'll actually set up our transfer first, though. We have our rough encounter there with Jewel set up, ready to go. We can do our entire burn in one pass. Just a little over three minutes on either side of your maneuver node. And that's the thing I want to share with you guys. I mean, I love making vessels that are easy to use. You don't need to do any crazy gravity assists or multi-orbit burns. And you can reasonably comfortably land at this booster stage as well. There's quite a bit of fuel remaining in this thing, so it's quite a comfortable landing. Uh, you just need to pick your re-entry point here, of course, so that you're coming down in the right spot. We have those nine air brakes out there. That helps us reduce just a little velocity as we are passing through the upper atmosphere. They are, sadly, though, the very first pass to overheat, so you need to pull them back in quite quickly. Then, as your engines are getting very close to exploding, you can do a full thrust re-entry burn just to reduce enough velocity to keep those engines alive. The air brakes out there and a very slight burst from our engine just so that we can deploy those chutes. And as we're about to touch down, we give our engines just a little more of a burst just to touch down nice and gently. <laughs> there we go. So we have recovered 97% the value of that vessel, which is pretty good. We were a little way off from the Kerbal Space Center that time, but no matter. The main vessel is, of course, still on the way to Jewel. We just did a little tweak there, and we are time warping now to get all the way up to our encounter. 
Before we actually reach our encounter, of course, we want to do a slight tweak to our orbit. We want to do a Tylo gravity assist, just so we don't need to waste fuel actually obtaining an orbit around the dual system. Now, another reason we want to do a Tylo gravity assist is so we can reduce our orbit so that we can basically encounter lathe without any real delta V spent. Just doing that burn there, it is only a burn of around 10 meters per second, so hardly any delta V needed to make that tweak. And of course we can now do an even finer tweak to make sure that we can match our inclination and altitude at the correct locations to get our encounter off to lathe. Just playing around with that a little more, doing a couple of little slight mistakes there as I'm mucking around. So now that we've got that organized, we can time warp in. The reason that we like to use Tylo for gravity assists, either allowing us to quickly enter Joule's sphere of influence or escape from it, is because Tylo is the very largest moon around the Joule system. Another great reason to use it, of course, is because Tylo has no atmosphere, so you can basically come in as close as you like to this thing. And uh, yes, it will not hurt you or burn you up, which is awesome. Well, unless you crash into the thing, that's, uh, yes, that can really ruin your day. So there we go, without any delta V spent, we were able to lower our orbit there to intersect with lathe. Now I did need to do a few orbits before lathe would pick me up. And I was able to actually just do a very tiny burn here just to bring our periapsis down so that we can pass down into the atmosphere of lathe and actually do an aero braking maneuver. Now the atmosphere of this beautiful aqua moon starts at 50 kilometers in altitude. So we're bringing this down here just to around 44 kilometers in altitude. We don't want to hit the atmosphere too hard, otherwise we're going to burn up and die. I actually did around five or six passes through the atmosphere to just slowly bring my apoapsis down, but uh, I'm not going to show all of that. After the first pass through the atmosphere, though, what we did need to do was just do a slight inclination change, just to zero it out. We want to make sure that we're quite close to zero, just to make landing and take off at that 90 degree mark easy. And then, of course, we can intercept with our other satellite that we actually have here, uh, very, very close to the equatorial plane. So there we go, doing that inclination change there. That was around a 60 meter per second burn. And I just needed to do that really because I didn't have my inclination perfect as I passed through Tylo doing that gravity assist. Just showing some of those beautiful shots of our aero braking maneuver as we pass through this very, very gorgeous moon here. Of course, remembering to extend and contract our solar panels for each orbit so that we don't uh, either A, run out of solar power or burn our solar panels up on one of these atmospheric passes. So you can see me here now patiently waiting to get an intersect with our little satellite that has been up here for many years now. We have our intersect there set up for our next orbit around. As we come in, we will face our target retrograde marker and we will slowly burn off our incoming velocity so that we can come in and complete one of our key primary objectives, which is to dock with another vessel around lathe. So undocking there using our RCS and Burberry now leaves his crewmates to complete possibly his biggest mission ever. Burberry Kerman, as we all know, is the number one test pilot to do anything risky, anything new or anything stupid. Using that wonderful docking port alignment indicator mod, Burberry can now come in here and dock with ease with the satellite. And there we go, we have met one of our main objectives. That isn't enough though, Lenina Kerman, our scientist, wants to come out and pick up all of our scientific readings that have been collected by this satellite over the many years that it's been here now. And she can also, of course, reset those experiments for future scientific readings before she returns back to her little Mark I crew capsule here. So we have all that wonderful science to return to Kerbin, but we also have our contract objective here met. We just need to return to Kerbin to complete that Explore Lathe contract. We have, of course, got our most difficult contract to complete, which is to test our Juno engine splashed down. Uh, in the oceans there of Lathe. So we are taking this little tiny SSTO here. Uh, very, very small burn needed just to deorbit this thing and we are going to hopefully come in and land this thing successfully. 
Overheating here isn't too much of an issue simply because the orbital velocity that uh, we need to get into orbit is only around 1700 meters per second, which is much, much less obviously than that of Kerbin. So we're not going as fast when we hit the atmosphere. Down we come here. Most of our velocity now gone, of course, and we'll come down and land in the ocean. Actually, maybe we'll touch down on the land and then come into the ocean to test our Juno engine. <laughs> and touching down there, nice work Burberry, what a pilot this man is, the very first SSTO to ever be flown on another planet. Well, actually moon in this case, it's a moon isn't it, Lathe? We can't visit a new moon without planting a flag and picking up a surface sample, so we'll pick those up and trot here back to our SSTO vessel. <laughs> Just needed to lower the landing legs to pick Burberry up there, and now we can head down into the ocean of Lathe and see if we can do this Juno engine test. There we go, splashing down into the water. We can just right click our Juno engine, run test, and there we go, we have achieved that mission. Now, technically with that huge amount of money, we could just leave Burberry here. He doesn't need to come back. Ah, who am I kidding? We can't have a space agency without a daredevil like Burberry. Come on, we are heading off this moon to intercept with our vessel up in orbit. This little midget SSTO has got the capability to get to orbit at Lathe. It's even got the capability to get to orbit in Kerbin, just. And uh, just having the one rapier engine at the back there gives us plenty of thrust to wait. We can just pitch ourselves there 20 degrees and wait until we've got enough velocity to escape the atmosphere and head up there above our 50 kilometer altitude so that we can circularize. We're just going to get as much horizontal velocity as we can with these very, very efficient air breathing engines. Our apoapsis there well above our 50 kilometer altitude for the atmosphere there as we pass 50 kilometers, we can now turn on those terrier engines and circularize, raising that apoapsis up there to meet the orbit lines of our target vessel. Our target vessel there just leading us by a little way, so we don't need to increase our orbit entirely on the first pass, just enough to do our intercept here. Completing our orbit there, and we'll just do another target retrograde burn. <laughs> and just came in a little hot and nudged it there. That, <laughs> that was close. Now obviously here because we have this vessel built almost as a cage of liquid fuel tanks around uh, the SSTO, it can be a little tricky to uh, get yourself back in here, but with a little bit of persistence uh, like this, all of a sudden you will find yourself docked like a pro. So our missions are complete, we are now heading back to Kerbin. It has been a wonderful day for all Kerbal kind. As we are doing our ejection burn to leave Jules' sphere of influence, we can reflect back on that very famous day when Lathe was first discovered. In fact, it was not entered into the records because the scientist in charge thought he was looking at Kerbin. Luckily, this error was corrected when a plucky intern informed him that telescopes don't work that way. The intern, of course, was shortly afterwards promoted and moved to the experimental rocket testing program. <laughs> that, that there is the little in-game description for Lathe itself. So we have set up our intercept here from Kerbin. You probably noticed there that our burn to eject from Joule was around 1,000 meters per second. So not a huge amount there. And we still have 3,000 meters per second of Delta V in our liquid fuel tanks here. Time warping in here now, of course. And as we get close to Kerbin, we'll do a slight adjustment. We want our inclination as close to zero as we can, and we want to get as close to Kerbin as we can to maximize the O-Birth effect that we can get by burning as close to the periapsis as we can there. Now, this vessel obviously doesn't have any massive heat shields on it, so we can't hit the atmosphere returning from Joule at this velocity. We need to do a huge retrograde burn, almost 2,000 meters per second, to actually drop us into Kerbin's sphere of influence. Luckily, we have that much Delta V available to us and more, so we're going to punch straight through and drop that orbit right down below the moon's orbit. 
So we are now back from Kerbin here obviously, but we still need to land on Kerbin's surface to complete our mission there with our Explore Lathe contract. Just pumping a little extra fuel into our little SSTO so that it can come in hopefully for a good landing. And our crew can say goodbye to Burberry again as he undocks. Slowly but surely uses his RCS thrusters to move out of the way of the parent vessel. Does a very small radial in adjustment to lower his periapsis. And we can quite rapidly fall towards Kerbin's surface. Now our inclination here is not perfect, but we can do our first atmospheric pass here just enough to drop that apoapsis down. As we come back down here into the atmosphere, we can steer our vessel as we re-enter, trying to change that inclination. Uh, and this is going to allow us to get quite close to the Kerbal Space Center uh, without using too much fuel to get there. In this situation, we lost our velocity just a little quickly before we got to the Kerbal Space Center. So we're using our Juno engines, which just gives us a little extra thrust to get us a little further without too much fuel use. And we come here. Landing gear down. Burberry, of course, being the acrobatic pilot he is, just prefers to nosedive at runways these days, it seems. In he comes there and touching down very gently. And before we even recover our vessel, you can see there we have completed all the objectives in our Explore Lathe contract. That is awesome! We have also returned with another 1500 science points there, which I can't do anything with. And we have also returned 100% the value of our little tiny SSTO there. This is not the end though, we still have three Kerbals stranded up in our parent vessel. Luckily however, we can undock each of the Mark I crew capsules. And we can re-enter these quite easily, simply by manually re-entering and deploying the chutes. So after accepting and completing all of those objectives in those missions, we have obtained around 2.7 million in funds in total. So this is enough funds to build something stupid next week. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed that video. Please do take a second and give it a thumbs up. All of your support helps a massive amount. You guys are just awesome. If you have any questions for me, please do whack them in the comments below. Thanks very much to all of you wonderful subscribers. And for those that haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. Dramatically reduced all the parts for the rest of our space station. So we're bringing this thing in here and we're going to very slowly gently coax the biggest Component of our space station out here through the central cargo bay and There it is in all its glory. It has a number of components